everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. May the good Lord bless you, guide you, and protect you. And I pray for you this new year, 2021, will be good for you. And I wish you progress, success, long life in every day of your life. You will not see sorrow. Trouble will never see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God will fight all your battles in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our topic today is how to trust God in the storm. When you are in the storm, how to trust God when you are in the storm. How to trust God in the storm. Amen. Amen. As a human being, you have been through a storm. All the time in our life, we meet different types of storm. Storms can come in many different forms, such as the thunder and lightning of struggling to parent to the sheets of rain in a really difficult partnership in this life. So what do we do when we are in the storm? How do we learn to trust and have faith in our Father when life is going in the extent opposite, opposite direction? Then we will hope. When I think of storms, I often remember the story of Peter and Jesus in the book of Matthew. In this story, Peter tells Jesus by saying to him, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and come toward, toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Matthew 14, 28 to 31. Peter called to Jesus and Jesus reached out to him. But Peter sank because he doubted. Have you ever done this? Have you ever doubted God? Was there any that asked him in some way to prove himself? But even when you showed up your, your fear of a road, your feet, if so, you are not alone. I and many people know this, and we have done this countless times. Even though faith is the goal, the fear wins out in the moment. I think we all know that when we cry out to God, He's there. We hear the promises of Him being with us, like in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, which says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Also, we hear in the book of Psalm 145, verse 18 to 19, that the Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth, he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. Even though we are aware of these promises, how often do we allow our doubts? To override our faith and trust in Him. It's natural to fear, but it's important to remember that fear is not of God. So we all struggle with trusting at times, but what happens when we don't trust in Him? <laughs> Do you think it's possible that when we don't trust, we begin to sink? We feel overwhelmed by the waves crushing around us. Sometimes we can't get our head above water. We dip down into a place that is not God-focused or even joyful at peace anymore. And this all takes place in our minds. When I imagine having 100% 100, 100 faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I imagine rising above and overcoming. God has already overcome the world. John 16:33 says i have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows but take heart 
because I have overcome the world. When we abide in and are saved by him through grace, we are also overcomers. He promises that we will have trouble, but that he has already overcome. Amen? We can tap into that power and also overcome our difficult circumstances with his strength. So if we know we can overcome, what holds us back from having complete faith and trust? The answer is this. The enemy is always at work. We know that fear is not of God and it is of the enemy. I talk a lot about this in another video. I have said about it, how to fight fear and focus on God. You can just go to that my video, you'll see it. What does scripture say about the enemy? Let us read 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devil. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The book of John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So you know that Satan is at work and that you must be ready to stand against him and put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says, the most important in line is the verse 3. Above is the last one. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That is what God wants for you, me and all human beings. We have a choice as to how we will navigate through the storms of life. We can either choose to rise above and walk on water with God's strength or we can choose to have little faith and begin to sink. Even the disciples felt fear in the midst of a storm. Again in Matthew, we read about a storm coming up upon Jesus and his disciples when they were out at sea. They were afraid and called out to God. Okay? When he got into the boat, this is the story. His disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was engulfed by the waves. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. You of little faith, Jesus replied, Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the sea, and it was perfectly calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of a man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. This story is from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, 23 to 27. I love this story because the disciples called out to God, afraid, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But Jesus rebuked them for not trusting him fully. These are the disciples, the one who knew Jesus and followed him in the flesh. How could they not trust and have faith? It just proves that any of us can experience fear even, even when we are close to God. Let me ask you something. <laughs> what is the fear coming up in you that does not allow you to trust God? It's a great question to ask yourself when you are feeling fearful. When irrational fears win, the enemy wins. When we have faith, trust and focus on coming from a place of love, God wins. Amen? So please, choose to trust God. It's that simple. It's a choice we make daily, even minute to minute. For you to submit yourself to God, I want to give you this scripture, James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When we submit to God and give him control over our lives, the devil flees. May you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.